Mike, I guess first of all, how how do you? It is Malik was just saying it is a business trip, but it is the Bahamas. How do you? I know as a coach, you're probably going to be in your room watching film, but how do you let the guys enjoy it with knowing that there's two games that you have to play and you want to win? Uh, well, I'm glad Malik said that because that's exactly what it is. It's a business trip. It's not a vacation. Uh, I know the, the weather will be nice, the water will be blue, palm trees, the whole nine, but hopefully our guys aren't going down there with that in mind. Um, if we can manage to enjoy the trip a little bit in the midst of preparing for a very good Mississippi State team, then I'm good with that. But that obviously can't distract us from going down there and doing what we're supposed to do, which is to try to beat Mississippi State on Thursday night. How much can winning two games down there change the, the arc of your season? Yeah, I think it can change it dramatically. I think that, you know, it's a journey, right? It's not a sprint. It's, it's a marathon. Uh, this team hasn't been together for even a year let alone two years, like some of the other teams that we've already faced and we will face. And so going down there to the Bahamas and beating, winning two games against two really good teams, obviously are, every team is a good team, would be huge for this team in terms of building camaraderie and uh, trust. And, and, you know, I think guys would be really excited about the fact that, like, hey, we beat two really good teams. We can beat anybody. Mike, are you a, a believer in the idea? You talk about not having been together a lot. Are you a believer in the idea that getting away is good from that standpoint, just in terms of a bonding situation? Yeah, it's funny you said that because uh, my dad and my uncle were in town. And as great of a place as the Yum Center is, it is phenomenal. You love playing in there. Uh, not only aesthetically, because we have the best arena in all of college basketball, but we have great fans. But for a new team that hasn't been out there to be playing in front of that crowd, without their head coach, with the fans kind of sitting on their hands a little bit at times and being unsure as to what our group is about, I'm sure it provided an extra sense of anxiety that hopefully we don't have to deal with on the road because now it's just us. So I'm looking forward to getting out and getting away and getting on the road and, and coming together and bonding and learning a lot more about each other. I guess all things considered, um, is it, is this kind of what, what you all could be it could be expected for the you know, change in philosophy? Like you said, all all these different faces and that that sort of thing. That I mean, you're you're, you're three and one, but it was always going to be kind of a, I guess, growing pains or work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot that has transpired since June. You know, uh, a lot of new faces, coaching staff as well, guys moving up into different roles. Eight newcomers. Um, Jalen Withers played the five all last year. Now he's playing the four. New leadership with Jared West, who's a big voice and somebody we want to hear from. But now he has to find a way to weave his leadership, you know, throughout the locker room. And uh, Malik is probably the one constant, you know, Sam Williamson. Um, but it's a lot of new things going on. You know, obviously coach not being around uh, these last couple of weeks. So it's been a challenge. You know, I think I said in a previous press conference, uh, you know, I, 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 we've all identified that, but there's no excuse. You know, we have a good enough team to uh, to win some games, to win the games that are ahead of us, and that's the expectation. Mike, You'd, you kind of you, you talked a little bit about Jalen just now. Mm -hmm. Do you have to do anything to maybe force him to get a little bit? You know, you kind of talked about it. You know, after last game, he kind of gets lost on the perimeter a little bit, being in that new position. Yep. Do you guys have to do anything to kind of force him to kind of get in the action? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, uh, you know, we try not to run a ton of set plays. We want to play fast. We want to flow. We don't want to get the ball to stop moving as much as it does, even though we, we still aren't trying to call set plays. But uh, to your point, I think that Jalen has to get himself more involved by running the floor in transition and by going to the offensive glass. Uh, how can we help him? I think that we can, you know, we have a few wrinkles that we probably need to think more about utilizing in order to get him in the lane more. Uh, the fact that he's only shot two free throws to this point is ridiculous. He's got to get to the he's got to get to the basket. He's got to get in the lane. He has to exert his will on the game a lot more than he did on Saturday. You had mentioned before that you guys are still kind of struggling to find your identity on the defensive end. What do you think is the main thing or things that are kind of holding you guys back from finding what your identity on defense is? I think consistency. I think that there were spurs throughout the game where we proved that we could guard. 
that we proved that uh, we could keep the ball in front and that we could scramble and we can get matched up and we could help one another and we could block out and rebound. But unfortunately, that's, that's the exception and not the norm. And it needs to be the norm. And uh, our practices today, tomorrow, and even Wednesday will be reflective of how important that is. Mike, uh, Malik was saying, sorry, Rick, uh, uh, he was saying, you know, he doesn't have pain and he doesn't feel like he's mentally held back by his injury, but he was saying he's a different guy coming back. What have you seen from him and kind of how he's adapting to, to whatever his new reality is? Yeah, I think that uh, he's dealing with, you know, a reality that you hate to see a kid at his age have to deal with, that he's just not, he just doesn't possess the physical prowess and uh, lateral quickness and uh, – leaping ability that he once had because of his injuries. And, and that is unfortunate. But Malik has more than enough in the tank to still be a hard playing guy that can make pivotal plays for us on both ends of the floor. And I think that he's trying to find that middle ground, even in these early games, trying to figure out how long he can go in a stretch. Generally, we like to play guys no more than about six, seven minutes at the most. Um, and Malik is trying to find a way to play really hard you know, and, and, you know, ball screen coverage, post defense, getting around in front and getting off his feet to, to rebound and play above the rim a little bit. That's a challenge when you've had the injuries that he's had. So he's trying to work through that. And uh, we have to be smart, obviously, with his minutes so that we have him when we need him at the end of games and obviously at the end of the year. Coach Holland's been around for a while. He was very successful at Pitt. He went to three straight Final Fours at UCLA. Uh, this might be one of his better teams at Mississippi State. When you think of of him and his teams, what are, is their identity? Well, I, I've watched a little bit of Mississippi State to this point. I obviously watched their game against Detroit in preparation for Detroit. I've seen a little bit of them in other games as well. My focus over the weekend was our team, trying to make sure that we got a lot better. Um, but I, I know that he's always had talented teams. Uh, he's a phenomenal recruiter, and I, I know that those guys always play hard. And this Mississippi State team is no different. They play extremely hard. They are obviously well coached by a veteran who's done it for years. And uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to win the coaching battle. <laughs> you know, he's a, he's a, you know he's a, quite honestly he, he's done this a lot longer than me. He's got a much better feel for it. But you know, it's not a coaching game. It's, it, the players decide the game, and I'll try to not to get in the way of our guys, uh, you know, winning the game. You know, our, our staff will do the best job that we can to be prepared and to give our guys all of the answers. And then at the end of the day, they have to go out there and execute, which is a good thing for me because I would lose that coaching battle. How, how are they using Brooks? Uh, I think similarly to how he played him at North, how he played at North Carolina. You know, he, he's physically imposing, although not the tallest guy, but he is extremely strong and well built, and he throws his body around. He knows how to use his body, and he's extremely skilled. You know, he he can make t tough turnaround jump shots, even though you know you have a hand in his face. And he's, you know, he's welcome to as many as, as of those as he likes, as long as we can test it. I'm, I'd much rather have him shooting those than ducking us in and getting offensive rebound putbacks and, and, and scoring two feet from the basket. So, but he's a force, but they have a force at almost every position. Obviously, Molinar is a pro. He's unbelievable. He's like a baby Russell Westbrook uh, with a better jump shot. No offense to Russell Westbrook. Um, you know, Matthews is a hard playing dude, hard playing dude. Uh, Shaq Moore, we know from. NC State, you know, Jeffries is a phenomenal scoring talent. They got a lot of good players. But that being said, we can win that game if we play to our standard. And we didn't do that on Saturday. And so that's what we have to find a way to do uh, starting the day in practice. Matt was limited on Saturday. You said dehydration. How was he now? Matt is much better, much, much better. He saw the doc today. Uh, they ran a test on him to make sure that his blood work. It's good, that his heart is good, his mind is good. You know, he's in the right place. Uh, I think there was an issue where he just didn't eat. Uh, he, he says he's not a big eater, and I told him I wish I had that problem, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, he didn't eat very much, you know, uh, that morning. And that obviously inhibited him from being able to play the game the way he normally plays it because he's a hard-playing kid. Mike, we, we, um, we talked to Reese Gaines last week. I was wondering from, from your guys' perspective, 
What value maybe does a guy like that have, having been around professional basketball, having been around that Spurs organization, just as a sort of as a mentor for some of your guys, a guy they can go to? Yeah, Reese has been great. You know, just seeing him in practice has been good for me because he's so positive. He encourages, you know, everybody from the coaches to the players to keep doing a great job. He's, he's also not like crossing that line up like, hey, I played in the league or, hey, I was a great player here. This is what you should do. You know, he's total opposite of that. Like he, he's just, you know, he's, he's made our program better just with his presence alone. He's a phenomenal guy. We're, we're, we're lucky to have him around. Anything else? Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you.